Hi, Tan here. So the more you fly FPV, the more you might crash into a building where you might bend the bell or you might crash into mud or rust. And through this video, I'm gonna run through what I know on how to remedy these problems, whether it is to fix or clean or in worst case scenarios, replace an FPV motor. And here's an itinerary on what I'm going to run through in this video. So scenario number one, when you hand twist the motor, a normal motor should sound something like this. Smooth. But let's just say I have a motor that sounds like this. It feels like something's rattling or is unsmooth. So what normally causes that is the bell might have had impact from one corner and is maybe bent. If you observe the motor from the bottom up perspective, you can see that this bell has all these magnets that's spinning around. So sometimes upon impact, if one side of the motor bell is slightly bent and it's kind of stuck in place, what you need to do is just choose a corner to watch and just spin the motor and eventually see if any of the corner of the magnet seems a little bit too close to the base. And basically we want to bend it away from the middle base. And to do that, we'll first remove the bell from the base. But before I pull this out, especially for the first time you do this, normally motor manufacturers have a Loctite on these. So if you attempt to just pull it open by force on your first time, there's a chance that you might strip your screw over here. And something I learned from Joshua Bartwell is the trick with the soldering iron. Just hold the soldering iron on there. Let the heat transfer upwards and melt the Loctite if there's any. Okay, that should be hot enough. And I'm gonna use my two millimeter screw and then begin loosening this thing up. Now I'm not gonna touch that screw, that's probably hot as hell. What I like to do is basically screw it to the frame with only one screw, and then now I can just easily pull it out. These are motor grips. If you got vice grips, you use that too. Just get one arm of the grip to hold on to the propeller side and the other holding the corner, I want to pull the bell towards. Just apply some force and the bell should be bending correctly in the direction you're facing. So now I'm gonna place the bell back in. And that sounds like it'll work. Now also check the inside of the motor for a metallic washer and a rubber piece. Sometimes it's not in good condition and needs replacement. Some motor sets comes with a replacement metal washer, but if you need something for the rubber piece, you might have to take apart another, another spoiled motor and look for your pieces there. Now another scenario that your motors might be stuck is because it recently crashed into mud, or in my case today, I was at an abandoned factory and I think some metal pieces or rust or carbon, something like that got stuck on the magnets of my motors and that's what it... Yeah. Now let me start by removing the props. Okay, from the outside you can see this motor. There are these little shavings and they're metallic. So that's why they're sticking to the bell right now. Now we're gonna clean this by washing them. But first I want to do a dry run before it gets wet. I'm gonna first grab some tape. Okay, so you see the metal shavings over there? It's gonna use the tape, paste it on, and extract it via the tape. I'm gonna remove the bell from the piece. And oh my god, this is bad, man. Try to use the stickiness of this tape to get as much metal shavings as I can out. Even the windings have the metal shit all over it. Twist it. More of it is just airing out. Now what I also found to help is this uh, brush. Brush it a little bit. Now I can consider that done and assemble it back, but since I'm here already, I'm just gonna clean and wash this which the cleaning and washing applies more for mud damage if you want to remove it more. For mud damage, generally you could use one of these normal brushes 
and um, just basically clean it out a little bit more. Now in the shower, just turn your shower head to the most aggressive speed that you can and then proceed to wash and then scrub it with a brush. Followed by the bell, try to clean up as much of the angles as possible and then brush. Now mind you, water is getting on all of my electronics right now, but it's entirely safe as long as you give enough time for it to dry, put it under a fan or something, and then wait a couple of hours before I pluck in a light bulb. It's been about an hour or so. It should be all right now. Now you can hear it's not the smoothest, but uh, that's why I like to put some super loop I bought for my 3D printer. Get some in there. Well, it's spinning smoother now. So I'll just apply for the rest of it. Now, oh, let's just do a quick arm test. Okay, to me, that sounds good enough to fly. Now, let's just say during a crash, one of your propellers cut the motor wires. Now, these motor wires, you can replace them by resoldering the joints, and the joints are actually close to the base of your motor. Let me show you. If I cut this heat shrink, it'll reveal three individual wires. And exposing those wires reveals a solder joint. So get a soldering iron, apply some heat, and you can remove the problematic wire. And then you can go get some typical 20 gauge wire and solder a new set. And once you're done with that, fill it with heat shrink so that you isolate all of your electronics. Don't let these joints touch and we can move on. Now to the final resort is if you have to replace the motor. But first you have to identify what motors that you're running. Now, if you have the motor in hand, you can read the prints that are on the motor. This is an Emacs Freestyle, and this is a 2306 motor. That is the stator diameter and length, but just remember 2306. While also written on this is 1700 kV, and that's the kV rating. And now with that information, I can just Google this and lead me to the product listing for the item that I need. Now first open your rig. Now typically you'll see two main chips at the center of the quad together with all your other components. Now more often than not, the top one with the USB in would be the flight controller, which is not what we'll be operating in this point. If we open and reveal the top chip, there will be another chip below it. And this is the ESC, electronic speed controller. You want to desolder the joints that the ESC is connected to. So get a hot soldering iron. Wherever the joints are located, just heat it up with your soldering iron and then remove. Now that that's free, you just unscrew the motor, pull it out. Now grab your replacement motor and solder each individual wire to one pad each. In any order, the sequence doesn't matter. And once you're done with that, screw in the motors. Now, if you're wondering in what sequence does the motors first, second, and third wire have to do against first, second, and third pad on the ESC, as far as our ESCs and motor communications go, it doesn't matter as long as all of the wires are individually connected to each pad. The main difference that happens when you change sequences on either the motor or the ESC is that the motor might change the direction and motor direction could actually be changed in software in Betaflight. There are plenty of guides. So go ahead and search up uh, motor changing direction videos on YouTube. And eventually, if it's not the motor that's causing the problems, high chances it might be the ESC or even check the signal wires between your flight controller as well as ESC, just for good measure. Anyway, I hope you got something of value out of this video. Thanks for watching.